Okay, other than the initial room check, when else should the environmental risk mitigation tool be completed? So it needs to be completed at least once per shift, regardless of the suicide risk level and whenever necessary in between those times, immediately prior to the patient's arrival in the room, immediately after family or visitors leave the room, immediately upon transfer to another room, immediately prior to discharge, and when suspicious activity arises. So what are some of the uh, behaviors that the individual might exhibit? So we'll just refer again to the attendant form that needs to be completed every 15 minutes for a high risk suicidal patient and every 30 minutes for a moderate or low risk suicidal patient. And you can see that under the behavior section, there's some with asterisks beside them. And any of those behaviors would be considered high risk and they need to be reported to an RN immediately so that it can be escalated to the care provider and um, they can implement any intervention that may be able to lower the risk for the patient. Shannon, tell me the warning signs of suicidal behavior. So the warning signs of suicidal behavior are that they attempt or threaten harm to themselves or others. They have superficial attempts to hurt themselves, such as like pricking their skin. There's possible hallucinations, such as hearing or seeing things that are not present. Talking incoherently and irrationally and taking off their clothes or stripping. And any of these observed behaviors need to be reported to the registered nurse so that they can be escalated to the best care provider immediately. What are the expectations of the individual that is providing the one-to-one -one or continuous visualization? So a one-to-one visualization includes continuous visualization of the patient, meaning at all times. You can't have any personal items in the room as the attendant, so you shouldn't be using your phone or any gaming devices because we need to be paying attention to the patient that we're observing at all times and shouldn't have anything that could distract the, ourselves. We need to complete our environmental room check when it's necessary and PRN. We need to provide safe transportation when moving the patient to other parts of the hospital and must remain with the patient. We need to document behaviors on high-risk suicidal patients every 15 minutes using the observation tool and every 30 minutes for moderately or low-risk patients using the observation tool as well. We have to accompany the patient to the bathroom with the door open. We have to account for all utensils that are disposable that may enter the room on the meal tray and we should not have any metal utensils. The safest form of food for these patients is actually finger food with no utensils. And we need to notify the RN if any of the suicide risks are noted and present.